Hey folks, welcome back to DCS. This is going to be one of three videos benchmarking the different optical engines for the Palmax Crystal Super. And this is in aid of a campaign that Palmax are running at the moment where if you enter to buy another optical engine, you're in for a chance of getting a 50% discount on it. So if that sounds interesting, then the link is in the description. You can use code BULLET at checkout to enter into the draw, and then fingers crossed that you get 50% off. The, uh, the competition, if you can call it a competition, starts on the 15th of October, and the winners will be drawn in early December I forget the exact date but I will put it on screen so for the benchmarking of these three optical engines we're using the Vipers free fly mission reason being we've got some friendly units obviously around we've got fire up ahead we've got some ground units and there's also some frog foots coming in in the distance which I'm trying to see if I can actually spot visually yes I can there's two just there and there's definitely more than two, but it's impressive that I can see that well in VR. In fact, the other two are further away behind them. So I can actually, I can see a difference in the, in the size of these specs. And at the minute, if we lock the um, first one up, that is about 30 miles away. 34 miles away. So I can see visually over 34 miles. How far are the other ones away? Can I even lock them? 47 miles. You might be thinking, well, it looks like dog shit on my screen. The screen mirror is what I'm actually recording the footage for for this, not through the headset. It's impossible for me to film through the lenses, so it's going to always look better through the headset than it does for you on YouTube, which I know is makes it very difficult to showcase these, these things properly, but that's the case for all three of these optical engines I'm going to showcase. So I'll try and brush over this explanation at the start of the next video. If you want to see how clear it looks through the headset, then one of my subscribers has actually done a through the lens video. I tried to do one as well. I just cannot get it to look anywhere near as good as he can. If you, imagine how like awkward formation flying is, except your formation flying between your phone camera <laughs> and the headset and the game to like keep it all aligned well enough to see all three at once. I, I just can't do it. I can't do it, but his showcase is very, very good. So um, go check that out if you want to see how good it looks through the actual headset. What I can show you though is the FPS. So we're getting about 90 right now with my settings. I will put an overlay of my settings on the screen. I'm gonna just do some low altitude rolls and stuff whilst we keep our eyes on the FPS counter so it's going about 60, 70 right now. Friendly Vipers overhead. So we're relatively low. There's ground units over here and there's fire. We're getting 70 FPS still. I remember I'm, I'm only using this as a benchmark because I can do the exact same thing to compare between all three. It does not mean that if you buy one with the same system as me then you could comfortably play the game like this all the time because like online for example my performance is not this good the idea of a, of a benchmark is to just give you a, a reference to work off so still get about 80 despite flying around all this stuff if we just do some rolls and i'll keep the zoomed on the thing like you can see it's fluctuating between 90 and about 75. the ultra wide module is the one that we're looking at right now um the ultra wide and the base super are basically exactly the same in terms of hardware and software the way that they achieve a higher field of view is by angling the lenses outwards slightly there is otherwise no difference at all in either of the headsets now they claim 140 degree field of view with 90 degrees of binocular overlap so i'm going to try and show showcase that for you but we're just going to bomb this convoy first so one two three four i may have just killed myself so the field of view theoretically if it's 140 if i point the nose at 70 degrees then the edge of my periphery should be north direct right because obviously 140 is double 70 so we'll put attitude hold on. The leftmost thing I can see is the, the peak of that mountain over there. And if you look at the HMD, that's saying it's actually 26 degrees, not directly north, which is what it ought to be, really. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that Pimax are lying, but it's one of the limitations of VR. 
If you imagine walking through a door, the closer to through it you get, the more off to the side you'd have to look to see the frame. And that's basically the, the problem that we're getting right now. So where my eyes are positioned relative to the actual headset glass, I'm not close enough to get the mouse out of the field of view. Like if I proper press it into my face, I can give myself about 15% extra. If I really tighten it up, this is going to kind of hurt, but let's see if that makes any better. So right now we're still looking at 7 a but I can see where's my mouse gone. I can see to about there, which is 22. So that's about eight more, I think. I think it was about 30 before, about there. About eight more, just because I've squashed it into my face. So if you have quite a flat face or a very small nose, then you, you're better off <laughs> in VR. The binocular overlap, so the most leftward thing I can see with my left eye, where's the mouse gone again, is about there. So that's about here, but that's about what I can see with the left eye. So that's the difference in overlap to my left, which I think is actually pretty insignificant. I don't really feel like the lack of binocular overlap for the ultrawide is really that bad. My money would be on getting the ultrawide if you're going to get any of them, just because the potential for a wider field of view is there. The performance is exactly the same as the Bose Super, but it's also a little bit more comfortable because the lenses are angled outwards, so your nose interferes less with uh, the fitment which isn't to say that it interferes with the fitment on the the base super at least for me but if you have a bigger nose than i do then i think the ultrawide would be of benefit to you and it just has more pros than it does cons in my opinion so the binocular overlap is 90 degrees for the ultrawide and 105 for the base model but given that you can't get the max field of view out of either of them anyway because unless your eyeballs are, are basically painted onto the lenses you're going to suffer a field of view reduction then the binocular overlap difference and the field of view difference are, are basically moot points and the ultrawide is therefore just a more comfortable headset because of the lens positioning that is my takeaway at least and we are still getting between 75 and 90 fps that's it for this showcase if there was anything that i missed then let me know and i'll try and cover it in one of the later videos thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you in the next one Cheers.